Stuck in. Uh, we thought we would go through, uh, project and predict the ladder in reverse order and then have a look at uh, those teams uh, each and every day. So we're going to get stuck into 18th, 17th and 16th. So by the end of our time, you're going to be have love. But the first few days, you just yeah, gonna it's going to be a tough. It's going to be a tough few days. Tough initiation, but just so couple, everyone knows, I had nothing to do with this. Everybody was, knows this, okay? There was good reason I was saying <laughs> we. I was saying we. Uh, right, team here. All right, uh, in eighteenth, and I don't know that there can be too much um, upheaval about this, but uh, the team that uh, we think will finish eighteenth uh, in twenty twenty four. Ah, uh, well, I don't think you'll hear that a lot. You only heard it three times last year. Th- so three and 20 uh, last year, uh, a terrible percentage. And Adam Simpson survived by uh, the hair on his chinny, chin, 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 chin Yes, he did. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. I mean, their biggest their biggest downfall the last two years, particularly last year, they just had injuries. They just could yes. not put oh. anyone on the park. So if you turn that around and they do have uh, a relatively good injury year, have they got – I guess the, the question is, do, do they still have the cattle? Mm. Yes, indeed. So from an ins and outs uh, point of view, the Eagles uh, made a few moves. It was probably more about what they lost than mm. than, than what they brought in. Of course, they they uh, they brought in some some players who had been at other clubs in Brockman and, and Matt Flynn. Uh, of course, Harley Reid, the number one draft pick. That's uh, massive – Yep. For them, from an outs perspective, Shannon Hearn retires, Nick Natanui retires, Luke Shuey retires. So some some ex- uh, premiership experience uh, goes out. Now, uh, the way we're going to uh, conduct our reverse ladder, we've sort of put some categories in place. So uh, what are you most excited to see? And it won't be a surprise from a West Coast perspective. The sure thing, what we can take to the bank uh, for 2024 uh, the big hope for the season and the worry uh, for the season. And then an X's and O's conversation about a, a coaching or a playing positional thing we can adjust or a game plan adjustment. So the Eagles, I'll uh, rip through this and then we can have the conversation about it. And get involved as well, 0433 98 or one 736 736 Most excited to see? It's got to be Harley Reid. Yes. has to be Harley Reid. Yes, Don't really is. need to expand on that too much. Hopefully, he can be uh, nice and healthy and play plenty of footy next year. The sure thing for me is I think Ruben Jinby will uh, prove or be on the path to becoming one of the best inside mid- midfielders in the competition. So in three years, I think he'll be on that yep. line. I haven't seen enough of him to think Clayton Oliver, Tom Green, yep. but I think he's got... got that level of ability inside uh, him. And if he can get some uh, bodies beside him, then he can absolutely be one of the best inside mids in the competition. Uh, The hope for the West Coast is that Jinby and Reid and Tim Kelly can start to form the beginnings of a really potent midfield group. And also, can big Matty Flynn, now this is a big hope, but we saw it with his teammate, can Matt Flynn replicate the teammate who effectively sent him packing sent him in Kieran Briggs yep. and make a giant leap. That would be huge for West Coast. The worry, the injuries to the same old names. So I'm talking about McGovern and Yo and those types who, who have been injured consistently over the past couple of years because there are only a few remaining premiership players and even fewer uh, leaders on that list. And then from an X's and O's point of view, they won a premiership largely off a game stall that, controlled the footy, particularly in the back half, those short kicking and marking, some hard running around the footy. You think of Gaff and Redden and those guys running hard to get those short, uncontested marks. And then they went in long and deep to Darling and Kennedy. I think they they need to just let the young guys play footy. Just go out there and play like they did coming up through the 18s. Teach them the game Monday to Friday Mm -hmm. and then let them play Mm -hmm. on Saturdays and Sundays. So that's West Coast. I don't disagree with you on 18th. There hasn't yes. been a great couple of years on it, let's be honest. No, uh, no. But but my biggest thing, and I touched on it earlier, you cannot win. Doesn't matter doesn't matter who you are. If your best players aren't out there week to week, you just can't win. And their injury uh, list has been the oh. most extraordinary thing that I think we've seen. I've seen in my time in 20, 25 years of, of AFL footy. You're never going to get that again, hopefully. 
So that's already a bonus. New, fit, new fitness boss yeah, over there as well. Yeah, he was out the window. <laughs> he, was, he, he knew he was gone. Um, Jeremy McGovern's going to be the big one for me because he's the man that sets it up down there. He's one of the greatest intercept defenders we've seen, four-time All-Australian, uh, an absolute superstar. And you're right, he and Yo. You get he and Yo back into the team. They're the big injury concerns uh, that they've been had last couple of years. The biggest one for me is going to be their captaincy roles. Now, we know Harley Reid comes in. That's going to be fantastic. But Oscar Allen and Liam Duggan. Mm. Um, from the outside looking in, I was like, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. obviously, you know, when you're inside the – I don't want to say that. The, uh, the old inside the four walls, <laughs> you know a hell of a lot more than what we do outside. Yeah. But, yeah, that's going to be a big one. Their leadership, they lost Hearn. They lost Shuey. Obviously, Nick Nat's gone as well, even though he didn't play a hell of a lot the last couple of years. Um, they have lost a lot of experience. So all of a sudden you're thrown in Kennedy in that as well. You're throwing these two men, each end, no one in the middle. It's just boys down, boy down back, boy out forward. Yep. They're your captains. It's going to be an interesting one. Yeah, it is. It is. And I should have went with this off the top, uh, but our man at Salty Bulldog on X, uh, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, so the latter is always fascinating. And often when we do the predictors, people say, well, hang on, how can how could you possibly have that team mm-hmm. jumping up or that team dropping out? In each of the, the past three seasons, a team that finished in the bottom four the previous season has, has made the finals the following year. And so 2020, Sydney made uh, an elimination final. 2021, Collingwood jumped up and made a prelim final. And last year, GWS jumped up and made a prelim final. So the proof is in the pudding when we do this. Can I, can I just throw, name, name these four teams that finished uh, in the bottom four last year? Yes. So we have Gold Coast, finished 15th, 16th with Hawthorne, 17th was North Melbourne, and 18th was West Coast. So well, why our man's Coast. telling us <laughs> that... One of those teams are going to jump up playing finals. Yes. Does, well, the, does, does the streak end in 24? It, well, it, it feels like it would, right? Naturally, it's our West Coast and North no, Melbourne. No but chance. I am a big one on that as well. There's always someone who jumps up uh, from outside the eight, least goes into the top four generally. That, yep. that usually happens. And no, you're spot on. I mean, what are they, what we were talking about before? What is the average 2.9? Nearly three teams yeah, a year. Yeah, three a year, basically. Come in and out. Yep. Yep. So it's going to be fascinating. So that's... Uh, our look at at West Coast, uh, as I said, um, we've had some correspondence off the 40 Wings temper text. You are both banned from WA. <laughs> that's from uh, Basil. That's Basil. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know that, look, yeah. you, you never want to finish last, but the reality is West Coast will be down mm. last, second, last, third, last. They, 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 you, you can't imagine them winning more than sort of four or five games, uh, which is one or two more than they that were able to win last year. I think what we'd like to see from them is at times last year, and 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 there were regular periods where they were just not even AFL standard. Well, they were. They were pull, pulling blokes from I mean, <laughs> literally second grade in W in waffle football. Uh, it wasn't fantastic for them. Uh, they need to change the game. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I love Simo. I was lucky enough to play uh, three years with Simo at North Melbourne. One of the great men you'll ever meet. Uh, I didn't think he he and the club handled. COVID well. Mm, it started uh, there. And I think it started there and it feels like it's just been a bit of a rot since. Uh, getting rid of a few people, older players, bringing in Harley Reid. It feels like a new vibe. Hopefully the injuries are okay. Maybe things can just turn out. And you know what? We went through this in 2006 down at Geelong where Bomber almost lost his job. We had a big internal review. All of those type of things. Cause just things it was an absolute disaster mm. of a year. And next year we won a premiership. So that's how quickly things yeah, can turn can out. Change. Now, in saying that, I don't think there's an Ablett, Bartell, Kelly, Johnson, all of those things on mm. names on the list. But things can turn around quite quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's get to a break because we're uh, hard up against, or we're getting up uh, hard against four o'clock. But uh, West Coast, eighteenth. Sorry, Eagles fans. So uh, thanks for your call, uh, John. Uh, here's one off the Forty Wings temper text as well. Make sure you're sending in. Don't just listen to our uh, ladder predictor and uh, and critique or agree with. Send yours in. Now, I can't read the whole text, so I've got to presume 17 or 18. I'll have to work out who they are. But this is from Dino. Got Adelaide in 16th. That's the one that jumps out at me. But uh, Carlton, Brisbane, Collingwood and Melbourne are Dino's top four. Then the Saints, who I think finished fifth last year, Port Adelaide, Geelong and the Giants. So... Uh, the nice. Swans and the Bulldogs, Essendon, 12, 13, 14. There's a couple that jump out. So no matter how you do it, when I was doing it last night, 
It's, I, it's I, actually the toughest thing. Fourth, <laughs> fourth to 13th, you could basically mix and match yeah. in any position and you wouldn't really feel I would like love it was to, that I'd actually wrong. like to meet, or do we actually know anybody who has picked the 18? From oh, uh, sure Santa Genia, has anyone actually ever picked it? Surely not. Surely not. People you can't will ring up and claim. Yeah, it. they we'll will need claim proof. It, but surely not. We'll need proof. Um, <laughs> Melbourne's going to be an interesting one. I've been on Melbourne for a, a well, for, for years basically because uh, I had a few people down there that I that I trust. Yep. And they said, you know, they they Melbourne guys reminded them of of Geelong. Yep. So these are Geelong people there at Melbourne at the time. And I've always said with this group, they should walk away minimum two, probably three. But all of a sudden, uh, the last couple of years, what's happened is that window is just starting to close for mine. Yes. So I'm a little bit worried about, does Melbourne get another one? Because mm. wow. I think that group needs to, I think, should get at least one more. Wow. Uh, what are you? What are you? Well, I'm just saying you'll uh, perhaps be... Uh, you'll be a little surprised and maybe a little disheartened uh, when we get to the D's uh, later in the week. Actually, maybe not that much later in the week. Mm. I yes, I've uh, Giants is an interesting one coming in at eight. Yes, I think uh, now get ready for the Giants, and I and I may uh, may have put something on them just to have a little bit of a top four finish for mine. The Giants. Oh, okay, okay, I think I'll, they'll be okay. I like that. I like that. Uh, let's get to a break because uh, position number seventeen is up after the break and. Uh, this will upset a few as well. So we're not aiming to do that. That's not our intention. We're just trying to uh, just uh, have an... Is this uh, the hardest thing to do? And a humble opinion. It's not disrespectful to you personally. <laughs> it's just our opinion. Exactly. <laughs> uh, position 17 on our 2024 uh, ladder predictor coming up, up on the other side of this. At position 17... Uh, the Eagles were 18th, and uh, unfortunately, this for our f- this, this really hurts for our friends um, at uh, Hawks Insiders. Uh, 17 is. <laughs> No, that's the wrong team, unfortunately. Unfortunately, no. Don't. Never fear for the Ruse. We've just uh, lost our way a little bit there. The Ruse. <laughs> The Roos are not 17th, but uh, if you're a Roos fan, don't go too far. Uh, <laughs> 17th, bang. We're, a happy team at We're an unhappy team at Hawthorne. I've got Hawthorne 17th. Now, that's a drop because they were able to go 7 and 16 uh, last year. But I've got them uh, dropping away. And so I'll... you're saying that North, if... Uh, yes. Or the, ne- the team next team... Yes. Is going to win more than seven games like Hawthorne did? Or are you going to say Hawthorne are going to lose? I think Hawthorne will lose ground. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. They they no, were in... they improved so much. They improved, no doubt, and they're actually a really enjoyable team to watch play the game. Yep. Even even if they weren't winning, they were a, a good team to watch. They pushed a lot of very good teams. Yeah, and they and they kicked the ball really well. Some of their ball movement was was fantastic. So their midfield's strong and going to get stronger. Yes. So the bookends are your problems. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. From uh, as we move through the categories, uh, most excited to see for me. I think again it'll be the emergence of Will Day. Uh, yep. But where, where? Because he gets thrown around a lot. So he's played fifty-four games in four seasons. Correct he enters, me if I'm wrong. A B and F. I think he I think did. He, he just, he, either just came, I think he just came off a B and F. Yes, yeah. either first or second in the B and F. Uh, he enters season five, which is the start of his prime. Yep. He did win the BNF, uh, Moons. Uh, well done to you. Uh, he's around 85 kilos now, so he's strong enough to play as a as one of those inside-outside midfielders. His endurance has always been strong. I think they just need to leave him in there. Yeah. He Last year, when the team, and a team would get a run on and kick three or four, you'd see him in, in the last line of defense as the extra. Leave him around the footy. Let him be a 25, 26 possession. He doesn't need to be 30-plus because he's such a good ball user. So Will Day's emergence as, a, as an A-grade midfielder for me. The sure thing, what we can take to the bank, I think uh, Reeves and Meek, the two Ruckman, they can't play together. That's what I'd be saying. They don't play together. They're too similar. Well, the very, problem very... is you've got to play one of them forward at times. That's right. And, and neither can do it. They can't play. Neither yeah. can do it. That's It's quite simple. Reeves, now, they'll probably say compete all summer and whoever's in form will play. Have you been up close to Reeves? Monster. <laughs> He's a gigantic. They're both monstrous men. Reeves is gigantic. Like huge. And he showed a little bit of an ability to get back behind yeah, the play and take has. some marks late in the season. So maybe it's Reeves to start off, but I don't think you can play both. That is what I'd be taking 
to the bank. I know Sam Mitchell played in premierships where they had two ruckmen in the team, but you know Hale and McAvoy yeah, and Hale was, all, a, Hale was a genuine forward. Could who could yeah, kick could goals. All, could all go forward. Yeah, McAvoy can bark. Could a ball, go forward. Yeah. Only needed one chance because he was a great kick. Uh, my hope for the Hawks is that someone can settle down beside Mitch Lewis. Now, Jacob Kaczynski leaves. Maybe old child comes in. Jack Gunston comes back. Uh, whether it's Granger, Barass, I'm not sure. But my hope is someone stands yeah. up and, 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 and can play alongside Mitch well, Lewis. Well, I think because... Joel would be – I think he went up to Gold Coast and because of the injury to King, probably was thrust into that number one position, which he's yep. not. No. Nah. So you give him a number two, maybe with Gunston coming back, you can almost a little bit of time in the ruck. a two or three position. It suits him a hell of a lot better. Absolutely. So hopefully maybe your child can, can settle down beside Mitch Lewis. And Lewis needs to hopefully remain healthy as well. My worry – my worry is that that person that needs to settle down beside Lewis is not on the list. Mm. So Charles fairly exposed. Kaczynski goes. Granger Brass, even if he does, uh, even if he does make it as a forward, he's probably more of a third tall yep. forward. He probably takes Gunston's position. They still rely heavily on Bruce. Um, Jack Ginnivan, of course, is there. But in terms of a second key forward, and you look at some of the best teams in the competition, they've got two. So. My 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 concern is that they might need to go back to the draft or the trade period and, and find that person to play alongside uh, Mitch Lewis. And from an X's and O's uh, point of view, we already mentioned that Will Day needs to be settled down. So from a playing positional point of view, leave him there. I know that, that Hawthorne have had two of their greatest in terms of being able to go where the game needs them in Hodge and Burgoyne. But correct me if I'm wrong, Moons, and you know, Jimmy Bartel was similar, Corey mm-hmm. Enright more as a defender, but go where the game needs you. But they're probably not able to do that until they are fully established in yeah. a certain position before they go and do that. Well, it's hard for a young man to because you got to kind of do yeah, it off your own yeah, back, and they don't have the. He probably doesn't have the experience to know when to pull the trigger himself to do that. Uh, but also, you want to give him time to just to develop in a position. Yes, you don't. That's why Burgoyne was great because Burgoyne was a midfielder mm. and was one of the greats. And then you had Hodgie, who was a midfielder, and then spent his time down back. And but he, they already established themselves yep. as these great mids. Yep. Yeah, I think it, you need to give him the opportunity to to settle down and and and, and be one of the best uh, that there is in that position before you ask him to move around. So that's basically uh, where I see things for the Hawks. So uh, a step back on last year, and if they do end up finishing second last, it'll. I mean, I guess Hawks fans will think it's a disaster, but. Uh, it's only uh, my uh, humble opinion. They brought, that, of course, we mentioned Chol uh, coming in. They bring in Dan Brosio from Essendon, who yep. I've liked at different stages. For he's clearly got some flaws that 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 those of us who don't watch him closely uh, see. Uh, Jack Ginnivan comes in. Gunston returns. Uh, they'll be hoping for a lot from Ginnivan. G- Ginnivan and Gunston are going to be the ones, obviously, of that forward half. Uh, Gunston, look, Gunston looked shot last year. Yep. Uh, so hopefully that was just a body issue or maybe just, just didn't quite fit in or yep. whatever it may have been, he can come back because Jack's been a genuine superstar of our game for, for a long period. Um, so hopefully he can come back in and, and, and play uh, somewhere close to his best. Ginevan, who I think is a really good small forward and will give you uh, a lot of zest up in the forward line. You know, yes, he'll get under people's skin and, and a lot of Hawthorne people, I can guarantee you, would hate him for the last two years. Now they will <laughs> love every minute of him. Um, their back line to me is still pretty strong. And I, I think Sicily is arguably uh, top three key defenders in the yeah. game. Um, I love watching him play. I love his leadership. Uh, their midfield, I think, is quite strong. Warple, Day, Nash. I couldn't believe what Nash did last year. That was a huge bonus. And they've got the best tagger in the game in McGuinness. Yeah, they do. Yeah, And, I, and oh, I'm a big believer. You need... A tagger in the game. So you're you need a, one you're in a your tagging team. man. I am a tag man. I had Cameron Ling, the greatest tagger in my opinion, and we used to throw him on the best best midfielder, and we knew from the first ball got bounced, that guy was yep. done. Yeah, you know <laughs> he was done. Uh, and McGinnis is that person. I just, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm staggered. More teams than him. So they have got a really good midfield. They've got a strong back line. It's going to be has has Lewis got enough help down there? Yeah, that's right. And then I guess beside beside um, Sicily as well, because look, I think Sicily is that good. He can play on the best forward and then still be able to be attacking and yep. be aggressive. It, it's, it's, 
is there a is there a is there a key position number two? Because again, you play against some of these teams that have got two really good forwards, and sure, Sicily might do his part, but does the second forward get off the leash because you haven't got a a secondary uh, key defender key, key defender yeah. uh, down there as well? A um, few texts coming in already. Uh, I'm a Hawks man. I, there's not a name uh, attached to this. I'm a Hawks man. I think we will have a stagnant year, winning six to eight games. Need to find. A key forward to help Lewis. Yeah. I think West Coast, North, Frio, and Richmond uh, will be the bottom five. So uh, there's uh, even a Hawks person who is not necessarily super optimistic. Uh, JJ, please, the Hawks gained more in the draft than they lost. Yes, that will be – that's something that will be determined, won't yeah, it? Yeah, and again, we, we, we did speak about them. Obviously, Ginevan, uh, but Jack's going to be – the Gunston's going to be the, the one. Can he go back to – Well, can he? Yeah, well that, well, that is the question because he didn't look like he could in Brisbane. Uh, Jim in Pasco Vale says Hawks bottom four. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, I guess mixed opinion on whether the Hawks will uh, will make ground. And, and this is what does happen, right? The, you look at the ins and outs and to me the outs look like uh, Sam Mitchell and that, and that list management crew – uh, just still trying to turn that list over. You look at Bramble, delisted. Brockman uh, asked for the trade to West Coast. Mm. Perhaps they wanted to keep him. Green, uh, Jekka, Kaczynski, Long, Lynch. Maybe they wanted to keep Lynch if, if concussion issues didn't creep up on him. Josh Morris, uh, O'Hara, and Ryan was one they wanted to keep. But you look at those four or five, they're just still turning over that list. Yes. They're not they're, there's no one of of any uh age or experience going out. It's I, I all think I think guys. Sam's been given the tick of approval to keep going. Yeah. And because when he did it when he first walked in, I think everyone, even Hawks people are going, "What yeah. the hell is Sam <laughs> doing?" And then we saw such an improvement through the year and we saw a midfield that we thought, "Yes, this this midfield group can take Hawthorne forward." And we saw a solid back line, but yeah. Obviously going forward's going to be there yeah, going to be there, maybe their Achilles heel. Absolutely. Uh, some breaking news from uh, Mark Robinson at the Herald Sun. Uh, Melbourne footballer Joel Smith is facing a suspension of two years and possibly longer uh, for taking cocaine. So uh, that story mm. is just breaking as we speak. Uh, Joel Smith looking at two years, potentially well, longer. You tested positive on game day. Yes. Cocaine, so yes. you're going to copy your whack. There, Absolutely. So that's the uh, latest from uh, at Robbo underscore Herald Sun uh, on Joel Smith. Two years or more for taking mm-hmm. cocaine. Let's get to the 4.30 news, and then we're going to get stuck in with position number six, position number 16. Uh, now our reverse ladder predictor for 2024 is underway. We've given you 18 and 17. Uh, we'll go the through them again, so 18 Eagles years. at 18. 17. Hawks, we'll somewhat surprising. Yes. Uh, at 16, uh, we're expecting a mild improvement from a team who won three games this genuinely hurts my last feelings, year. Genuinely. Three games I'm a club last legend. year. This genuinely hurts my feelings. Yeah. You, what, what? Pardon me? I'm a club legend. <laughs> I just wanted that to be clear because <laughs> we'll probably get replayed. <laughs> It'll probably get replayed, that's all. Uh, a team that only won three games last year, hopefully they can win a few more, and they are. The Kangas, you know the song. You know the song. Uh, Arguably the best song to sing. You reckon? Yeah, it's a crack. When you sing the whole thing, it's an absolute My kids belter. love the AFL Club theme song. So often yeah. we'll be driving around in the car and I'll say, Dad, put on Spotify and play the club Really? <laughs> they love them all. They love Frio. You get together love... and you go, arms to arms. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Oh, look at him. He's uh, back to 1999. Melties. He's loving it. So, North Melbourne. Uh, now, we had a text earlier about this uh, person. So, I, I'm i I'm actually going to, uh, might even do some homework and try and um, work out whether this is accurate. But most excited to see, for me, it's the return of Charlie Combin because he's fearless when he goes mm. after the footy in the air, he looks very, very likely. He's around that six foot seven mark. Mm-hmm. But I was reading about him last night. He has had so he's coming off a broken leg slash ankle. Yep. He has had the following injuries since the age of fifteen: a broken wrist, a broken inner cheekbone, fractured kneecap, broken tibia, refractured the kneecap. That was all before he was drafted. Yeah. Then in the AFL, he's had a back fracture. He's had surgery on a tibial stress fracture, which is not good. He's had a broken collarbone, a broken and a broken ankle. So 
So he didn't drink enough milk. As Is a he kid. the definition of injury prone or? That's um, concerning. And you're right. And the way that he hits packs, I mean, I saw a couple of games last year. Uh, he's still got a lot to learn as a key forward, but genuinely gives a contest. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. They, and, they, and they are in desperate need because if anyone needs a hand in the AFL, yeah. <laughs> it's Nick Larkey. Well, he can be the man. But we had a text earlier from Brett saying, Charlie Combin, and this was before we mentioned Combin or the Roos, Charlie Combin is flying down back. New role and will surprise. So we'll get to that. Well, obviously, you know, I don't want to cut you off, but yeah, Mackay's going. Yes. Uh, Mackay, Mackay. Mackay, gone. Yeah, Mackay, gone. Uh, Logue injured. Yes. So that's where we get to uh, here with the sure thing. My sure thing is big forwards will kick bags against North Melbourne because you look at Colonel Mackay, that's uh, Harry Mackay. You look at Hawkins, Cameron. You look at Lewis Lynch, uh, the King boys. Oscar Allen, Norton, and Eugle Hagen. There's no shortage of tall forwards capable of kicking big bags. You've got Tex Walker and Joe Danaher. There's heaps. Mm-hmm. Aiden Core's been much maligned, and he's probably undersized, to be honest, and he's injured at the moment. Griffin Logue's out for most of the year with an ACL injury. So Will Dawson's a baby who's 200 centimetres, but the problem is he's 86 kilos. Uh then you've got Toby Pink, who's a 25-year-old defender who spent three seasons on Sydney's rookie list. So he's unproven. And then you've got a 25-year-old from the VFL, Callan Dawson. That's their, yeah. they, they are their key back. So that is a, a massive, massive concern uh, for them. My hope for the Ruse is Taron Thomas repaying the club with, with I guess, and, a full and, did, and did by the end of the year. He did by the end yeah. of the year, but a full season and an uninterrupted season. Yes. So... So go out and play 23 games or 24 games, play consistently, do what he did late in the season because he was rated, he was rated above average for clearances and tackles last year, which is a, I reckon that's a nice I'd combo. Lo- I'd love him just to put every energy into being the best player that he can be yep. over the next at least 12 months. At least. That, that's a minimum. Yeah. Uh, because he's – his talent and ability from the moment that he was drafted or before he got drafted, that was all they could talk about. Yes. Now, his off-field stuff just hasn't been able to put it together. That's right. That's right. And that's what What we him. saw on field late, you can see why they keep they keep basically opening the door. Yeah, so right. he's been very, very lucky, extremely lucky, in, in my opinion, to still be on a list. Mm-hmm. Now repay the faith and do it for yourself because he is a he could be a really star player. Oh, he can be a he can be a game breaker for them. Uh, so he's my hope for them and for him. The worry is now Todd Goldstein's gone, but he you know he's probably gone to Essendon to 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 play fifteen games yep. a season. As I said, I, I like Combin long term as a key forward ruck. Maybe he's having a change of position, so we'll find out. But. Well, on the back of what you said with the defenders, you can see why. If that's yeah, I can understand yeah. it, but there's also a big need for him in the forward mm-hmm. line. Can and will Tristan Cherry or uh, Callum Coleman Jones. Jones make yep. the leap as a number one forward? Now, I think Coleman Jones is a tweener. He he looks – he's not quite big enough to play as a number one ruck or he hasn't quite been able to, and he looks like he lacks the movement mm-hmm. and the ability to get involved at ground level as a forward. So I'm not sure – whether he can, because there again, there are plenty of good rucks to go up against. Big O, you've got Darcy and Jackson, Gorn, Grundy, who I think will have a big bounce back year, Nancurvis, Rowan Marshall, Tim English. So they'll need Cherry and or uh, CCJ to, to, to make a big leap. And that's my concern that maybe, you know, they're not quite up to it. From an X's and O's point of view, a game plan uh, point of view, last year we saw way too much um, chipping around in the back half yeah. from Cor and Mackay and Zebel. Now, a couple of those guys are, are gone. But the game style needs to be a little bit more bold out of that back half and give Larky, who did an amazing job, but give Incredible. those guys in the middle and, and front half of the ground an opportunity to kick winning scores. I think that it's hard when, when you are one of those bottom teams, um, particularly if you're playing down in defence, to go quick and be bold knowing that the ball just could go back over your head within the next three seconds. Yeah, that's so right. So that, that is always hard. But um, they've got a young midfield uh, that looks very strong. Uh, you're talking about uh, Wardlaw, Sheasel, obviously. I think he'll move into the midfield a little bit more uh, over the next 12 months, 18 months. Simkin and LDU are uh, genuine uh, stars for that footy club. Thomas, as we talked about, Bergman and Phillips, you know, these are young kids that are starting to develop as well. So they're pretty, they've got a nucleus through that midfield. They've got an unbelievable key forward. They've got a great... 
on the verge, I think, of being a great uh, smaller forward in Zerha. Yep, yep. Uh, but their back line is going to hurt them, particularly their key backs. Uh, Zach Fisher is a bit of a, a nice acquisition for him because his ball Worth use. Shot. Yeah, his ball think, use is fantastic. You might throw him on a half back and, and maybe throw Sheasel more up into the mm. on, on Dylan ball. Stevens, the same. Yeah, yeah, Worthwhile. Yep, yep. Worth like a high draft pick. Um, they're not lo- not a lot of downside, probably only upside in 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 a couple of those acquisitions. Now, but someone's asked here, Brad, can Zerha have a breakout season? Well, there was a text message, not a text message, a tweet going around from the great David King today, speaking about a lot of things North Melbourne. Um, and he spoke about Zerha. I think having basically just it just looks like he's had. A very good summer so far. Yep. Trimmed up, looks fit, looks strong. Well, can can what, he be the Petrarca to Goey top player? He's obviously doing his uh, bulls cooking for others and not for himself because <laughs> some of the stuff he cooks up is I follow follow along on Instagram. I love his uh, love his cooking stuff. Uh, the big uh, the big uh, tomahawk steaks and mm. those sorts of things. The American uh, American meats. Uh, he's clearly not eating it because he's fit and firing. <laughs> but they used him around the ball. One of the things they did do is they used him at stoppage a bit last year, yeah. you know, Dusty style and um, got the him great, involved. The greatest role in football is Dusty <laughs> Martin's role. And you've got to go, you've got Petrarca, now you've got Zerha. Go to a, go to a, go to a clearance. And run forward if you get it, great. If not, just keep running to the forward line. Yeah, Best role in footy. It's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, Dusty probably uh, has done it so gives well. good reasons yeah, exactly. to be allowed to do it. Now, maybe some others are, are still on their way. But yeah. I think from Zerhar's point of view, is it, it, it gives, as a forward, and you know this and I know this, a lot of times you go to a game, I hope I get a chance here. I hope I get a look at it. I hope it doesn't take, particularly playing for North, I hope it doesn't take 20 minutes. What yep. if we don't score in the first half, uh, first quarter? Well, you know, Zerha's going and playing around the ball and he's saying, well, I'm going to I'm gonna tackle someone, I'm going to hit someone, and he loves to do that. So I think North can improve. It won't be by much, but um, 17th last year, only three wins. I think they can win half a dozen. That's probably where I, I, I see yeah. them. I don't no, think they look, can win they can any get, more. If they can get half a dozen, I think that's a fantastic year for North. So North. that's the way we've seen it. Uh, we we have seen it in the first uh, day. We're going to do three more teams tomorrow. So uh, tomorrow it's going to be positions 15, 14, and 13. And I think tomorrow might be a long day. Let's just say that. Tomorrow <laughs> might be a long day. So uh, it's good fun. It's just well, our Let's hope we don't upset someone like we have Paul. Hawthorne at 17. There's a reason you Muppets do summer radio. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. And uh, who knows? We might not be wrong either. It's just an opinion at this point in the season. But uh, it's good fun. We'll continue on with it tomorrow, Moons. You'll be back. I'll be back. Uh, I'll be actually down uh, in uh, Nana Goon at Pakenham. So that'll oh, be nice. good fun. And we'll hook in. We'll catch you tomorrow.